uh, a Christmas story as we've started a couple weeks ago. If it were up to me, I'd start talking about Christmas in July. I'm just going to I'm just going to let you know. Uh, but for your sakes, we start on December 1st. In Matthew chapter 1, we're sharing in the scriptures of these, what we call Christmas stories in the birth of Jesus. We're going to start in verse 21. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. And so all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Can you say that one more time with me, church? Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Which is translated God with us. The Scripture gives promise that God wants to be with you. And he wants to be with me. And so he provided a way for that to happen. That was through Jesus that he's given us his Holy Spirit through Emmanuel. But we can get busy, can't we? And we can get caught into, into life, into stuff that's going on. We enjoy Christmas time very much. Everybody has their own stories and their own traditions and things that that you do for some of us it's the day after after turkey day after thanksgiving that we begin to put our christmas tree up for some of you you do start in july uh it's a little bit over, i'm just gonna say the disclaimer it's, it's it's a lot when those christmas lights go up a little bit early um maybe you're newlyweds this year and you begin some of these traditions that are just starting in your family where you've done things a certain way and someone else's your your wife or your husband has, has done things a certain way with their family i'm getting a lot of feedback give me just a moment y'all and um maybe maybe your families are merging now And so in that merge, you're learning how to start your own traditions. Maybe you've dived in with some uh, in-laws and you're doing some traditions their kind of way and learning how how traditions are are done in the spouse's family and some things you like and some things you may not like. And and, and you're building this this life together on on, on the two of you coming together now. Maybe for some of you, it's a lot like me, and you feel like your voice does get better around Christmas time, and, and you can hit certain octaves that you, you can never touch on, on December 26th, because that's when my voice goes back to bad. But, but it's amazing. I feel like from December 1st to the 25th, I am the most anointed singer in the choir. And, and then uh, if you stand behind me again, you may oppose that, but that is, that is what I feel. And we, we wrap everything. We decorate everything. Lights go on everything. I love the smells, candy canes and, and Christmas trees and pine needles and, and, and cinnamon. It's all so good. It makes you nauseous and excited. At the same time, it's wonderful. But it can also be a very busy time of year. My wife and I, when we first came together, we were missionaries there in South Texas and in Mexico. And, and we would do a lot of, uh, of ministry uh, around the holiday season, we would have missions teams that would come in this time of year, and, and we would have special event for Christmas time called. Uh, it, it was like a candlelight service, but it was a big event uh, where we had the candlelight part, but it was more of a uh, of a big outreach where we had had booths that were set up and all different kinds of foods and and, and much like uh, much like a nativity that is set up for us over at Christ Family Outreach next week and. And it's all just tons of work that goes into it. And then we pastored a small church at the same time. I would be going back and forth into Mexico. We had just had Jillian. And so there's all of these things that are happening. And we were near each other, but we weren't really with each other. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like we were at all of the same events. We were doing the same things. We were in the same places. We were we were together. But we, we weren't with each other. I wonder if any of you have ever been there. Where you're in the same room. I mean, today we have a very important event that is taking place. The Redskins versus the Cowboys. And I will not elaborate on that anymore. But I will say, this is a day 
that my family may not get me the way they get me in other days. You might be right beside your husband or your wife and you're the football fan in the house. And so you're watching the game and they could be near you, but you're not really with them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Near, but not with. And I think for a lot of us, it can be like that around this time in different times throughout the year. It doesn't have to be Christmas. There doesn't have to be a lot of different festivity things like this going on. It, it could be that, that you want to be with God, but because of those trials and things we were talking about and praying for are, are going on, it could kind of take, take the momentum out. It could take the affection out. It could take the feeling out of, of being with, of the encounter with, of the experience with. And even though you're near, it could be the busyness and, and the business of, of things that are happening. And it, it could be the, the, the going and, and the getting and the presence and the preparing of the food and the stuff and the family. It could be making sure that the, the gifts are under the tree and the, the tree is up just right and the lights look good and we have all of the stuff going on in the house and, and all of the stuff going on in the church building. We come on Sundays. We're coming to the candlelight service. We're near, but there's a difference in being near and being, and being with. And so my hope and my prayer has been and is that, that we wouldn't just know what it is to be near a church building, a facility, a family member, but we would, we would experience and have the encounter of Emmanuel, God who is with. And He is with you. He's with you in this time, and He's with you in all times. God's given us the greatest gift that, is, that has and, and could ever be given. It's the gift of salvation, and along with that, now for us, through Jesus Christ, is the gift of the Holy Spirit. Last week we talked about Him as the Comforter. That he is one just like Jesus to walk alongside with us. Another description or definition of the Holy Spirit is one who holds the heavy end of the law. And when I read that, I was like, whoa, that is, that's intense. That he does what we cannot do. The weightiness of, of carrying out and fulfilling what we know as the law. In other words, being a good, upright, carrying all uh, that, that we are supposed to do. Be the person that we are supposed to be. I wonder how many of us have fallen short of that at some time in our life. The Holy Spirit is the one that, that lifts you up. That does what you cannot do. That carries the weight that you cannot bear. He makes light that, that which is heavy. That's the place of the Holy Spirit. And that's the gift that God has given. He doesn't come for a little bit and then leave. He doesn't come when you're good and then leave when you're bad. He doesn't give you advice and then say, you know what, you can keep it. I'm just going to stand over here. But He helps you and He brings conviction. And in that comes comfort. This is what He said to do. This is the strength He gives to do it. And then in doing the right thing, this is, this is the comfort that comes from that. I am Emmanuel, God who is with you. This is the Holy Spirit. And I was reading throughout Scripture. I, I got into a study a little bit on David, and I was reading a couple Scriptures from King David. In Psalms chapter 73, verse 26, he says, My flesh and my heart, they may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. This is a man who, he knew the Holy Spirit, but he knew Him as a host in a place. He, he had this tabernacle that was set up that he would go to, and in that place would be worshipfulness. And he says, though I may fail, my flesh, my heart may fail, still God's strength in his heart, that's my portion forever. Psalms 28, verse 7, he says again, the Lord is my strength, and he is my shield, and him my heart trusts, and I am helped, and my heart exalts, and with my song I give thanks to him. Hmm. Is that not what we were just doing in the midst of this worshipfulness? And then we go into New Testament. In John chapter 16, verse 33, Jesus says this to His disciples, and it's spoken to us. I have said these things to you so that in Me you may have what? Peace. And in the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I've overcome the world. And so through this peace, now, it's not something on the outside, right? It's from a within, because it is from the Spirit of God that is within 
He abides within the body of Christ. That's you, that's me, for all who have called on the name of the Lord. And then in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Whose might? His. So that's not yours. Put your name on that and mark it out. Because it's not your strength. Your strength will fail. Your strength will fail. Your voice will, will get a little dim at times. Your shoulders may feel a little weak at times, but it's the strength of the Lord. And it's in this time that His strength, His comfort, His peace, this is what Emmanuel means, God who is with you. And, and we have these different names, and I think we can put them in a bullet list, and, and we, can, we can list them out. God is Emmanuel, God is the Prince of Peace, God is the Comforter through the Holy Spirit. And we can really skip over the, the significance of what each name means. God is the one who gives love. God is the one who gives love agape, unconditional. That means when others may let go, you feel like you've let down so many times that they'll do this number, but God is here still. He is the giver of grace. He is the giver of compassion. He is the giver of mercy. He is all of these things found in God with you. He is Emmanuel. There was a letter written by a little boy to Santa Claus a few years back. He says, Santa, I want to tell you about, about a, few, a few people. First one, his name's Harold. Harold's three years old. Harold's good some of the time. The next young man... His name is Jeff. Jeff is, Jeff is eight years old. Jeff, Jeff's good every once in a while. The third one, his, his name is Norman. Let me tell you, Norman is good all the time. Just thought you should know this before the big day, Santa. Love always, Norman. <laughs> and while that's a really good letter, there's one thing I find wrong with that. That is there are no Normans. Unfortunately, we all fall short from being that Norman who's just got it together and got it all right and doing the right thing all of the time. Amen. But this is the very reason that he has given us his Holy Spirit so that in my weakness, his strength would surpass and bring strength. That in my faults and failures, that I'm, I'm no longer living in accordance with that, but now in tune and intertwined with the Spirit of God. And I love it. In every area, even in the Old Testament, it gives, it gives Scripture reference to who He is in the midst of your life and even in the midst of family, where one, two are greater than one, right? Husband and wife, you're greater together than you are separate, but there is a third. A three-strand cord is not easily broken. And that's the Holy Spirit even in marriage to wrap around, to strengthen you in marriage that you would be there for one another and help for one another. But then there is one who goes first and foremost to bring strength in marriage. In every area. He is God, Emmanuel, who is with you. And I love the Christmas time story. We're sharing it here. This is the nickname of Jesus that is shared when he's born. And uh, I can imagine it's kind of like the middle name, Jesus Emmanuel. But for us, it's Emmanuel. God, you are with me. And it's such a good place to think about in my, in my lack, in my empty. He is full. He is the one that overflows. To grab hold of that, that's who, that's who he is. So this is who we're talking about, the one who makes light that which, that which could be heavy. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4, verse, verse 4 through 10. It says that this is God, God who is so rich in mercy. Because of his great love for which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you've been saved. See, some of us, we think it's our journey to get to God. And I've been told that throughout my life as a Christian, this is, this is my journey to get to Him. I remember I had a manager when I was working in, in the restaurant, uh, in the restaurant where he says, you know what, this is my journey. And it would, always, it would always ring out because immediately 
for whatever reason, I couldn't, I didn't want to battle, I didn't want to battle his wit, and I knew there wasn't much, much to, to say and argue in this point. But my thought was, you know what? It's not your journey to get to him. It's been his journey all along to get to you. It's been the journey of Emmanuel, God who is with us. You didn't send your son to get to him, right? He sent his son to get to you. You didn't die on a cross for him. He gave his very best to get to you, to be with you. That's love. Can you imagine a love so great? Can you imagine giving up your very best gift? Can you imagine everything that you have? Heaven, if you've heard the term, went bankrupt so that you could be rich in Christ. Imagine you were a multimillionaire, and the Lord says, in order to get to me to leave everything, for some of us, that may be, ooh, hopefully we would be able to, right? But this was his journey, that you would be rich. Heaven would be bankrupt so that you could know the richness of his love. While you were still in that place of sin, while you were still in this place of having, having nothing but wretchedness, wretchedness, in my wretchedness, he has made me whole. And then he raised us up together and he made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you've been saved through faith and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Not of works lest anyone should boast for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that you would walk in them. And only with him. Only with him. How many of you have done Christmas shopping already? Wow, you guys are a lot better than me. How many of you have collected some points with those cards over the holiday season? You've gone into the sports store. You've gone into the the grocery store even, you've gone into the makeup store, you've gone into the tennis shoe store, you've gone into the toy store, you've gone into the furniture store, and you're collecting points. You swipe that card, you get, you get 10 points. You swipe that card, you get 100 points. You swipe that card real good, you get 1,000 points. Oh, guess what? If you go at this time and you buy this kind of thing, your points are multiplied. You get two times, the, you get three times, you get 10 times the points. It's a wonderful point system out there, y'all. And when you go into that sports store that I went into the other day and you swipe that card and you buy a little extra for yourself even because you know what? I'm collecting points. And so you swipe the card and they tell you, how many, how many points do I have? And Well, you've got, you've got 1,700 points. You're near. I'm near. Well, can you tell me how, how near I am? Well, you only need 579,260 points. <laughs> And you get this here free keychain, and it's, oh man, wow. You're near, but, but <laughs> there's no being with, right? And right when, I remember two years ago, I went to that same sports store, and I was so excited, and little did I realize it was, it, the, year, the, the month was February, and I had until December, the last day in December, to collect the points, and I was so close. And wouldn't you know, they started all the way over the point system, because it's a new year. And I was so frustrated and so angry with myself. Why didn't I buy? Why didn't I figure it all out before? That's not being with. That's not the Holy Spirit. It's not an earning system. It's not if I just do a little better, if I just earn a little more, that I have this point system and I can, I can earn a neat, a neat gift. I can earn my place here. I can earn my position there. I can earn His grace. I can earn His love. I can earn His comfort. I can earn what He provides freely. No, that's not being with God. That's not Emmanuel. 
That's religion. That's law. And the Holy Spirit that came for you and that came for me, now being with us, does what we cannot do. He swipes and He swipes and He swipes and He swipes. And it's so amazing how the love of God and the grace of God and the with me comfort and peace of God is unlimited. It's unlimited. It's the gift of Emmanuel, God who is with us. And I love that. It's complete, it's whole, it's instantaneous, and it's free. He is Emmanuel. He is with us. In Romans chapter 8, verse 35, it says, Can anything ever separate us from the love of Christ? Does it mean that He no longer loves us if we have trouble or if we have calamity? Shall tribulation or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. What is it that you may be going through? As it is written, for your sake. Now this is, this is the church of the Old Testament, or the church of the New Testament. At this time, they were going through extreme persecution. Family members, they were losing. Through persecution, he says, for your sake, we were being killed all day long. For we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter, yet in all things we are more than conquerors with Him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, neither angels nor principalities nor powers, nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. This is so good. Wherever and whatever you may be going through, this is to be personalized. Do you understand? I lived in Texas. I'd say I'm, I'm borderline Texan. I lived in Texas for almost a decade. They marinate everything. I, I mean, I'd marinate a donut if I could. Let this Scripture marinate. That nothing you have done, nothing you have caused, nothing that has happened, nothing that has been out of your control, neither self-inflicted or come from outside in, nothing can separate you from the love of God, from Emmanuel, God who is with you. This is powerful. This is what brings change and transformation in the hearts. It's the understanding that with great grace, it's the understanding that with unconditional love, and it's the understanding that God who is with you now, the Holy Spirit, the Counselor, the Comforter, the daily giver of life, the one who will never leave nor forsake, He's the one who is with you. So I want to encourage you in this holiday season and at Christmas time and whatever it is that the highs and the lows, the mountains and the valleys. This is who He is. Emmanuel. Amen, church. Amen. Let's stand. Let's pray. And so 